Good morning, YouTube. Welcome back to my channel. And if this is your very first time, a very special welcome. I'm Bonnie, Old Soul Mermaid. And on this channel, we do unboxings and walkthroughs like the one we're going to do right now. And we also discuss tarot topics. So all of this done through the lens of this middle-aged ex-Mormon woman. So Without further ado, um, I found this very special deck last week when I was looking at watching uh, Casper, the Boy Diviner, his YouTube channel, and his unboxing of this deck. I was totally unaware of it. I believe it was a Kickstarter, but you can now get it off the creator's website. And the deck today is the Bataan Tarot by Miyako. A Miyako M, I believe it is. So I, it came in a big brown cardboard box. So I, all I did was um, take the contents out. So just to show you what I got in the box is this cute little sticker, which will definitely go on an art project or a journal, and a thank you postcard with um, little directions about storing your deck. And there is um, here, like you see right there, take a snapshot of it. This is where you can um, follow the creator. And also if you're interested after this walkthrough where you, you can uh, get yourself a deck. Cause it is as of today still available Though um, I'm not sure, you know, if quantities are limited. This was a Kickstarter deck. So um, she does have some leftover copies. All right. And the other side of the postcard it are uh, pictures from the deck. All right. So it just came in this nice, uh, plain, minimalistic tissue paper, which I will use for a collage project, I'm sure. And you know what? I use this bubble wrap also. I saved some for mailing, but um, I, I also use it for, I use the bubbles and I put acrylic paint on it and I use it, you know, for stamping and texture on a gel plate or on paper. Ooh. And there's something else in here that just fell out. All right, what is this? I think I own this washi tape. <laughs> oh, more goodness. Oh, yes, I forgot. While supplies last, you get the little quartz crystal with the deck. I do remember it saying on the listing, while supplies last. So this came with a Kickstarter. One thing I did not get that was for Kickstarters, the Kickstarter backers got a little muslin bag for the deck. Um, but since I didn't back it on Kickstarter, I did not get that, but I'm glad I got, you can never have too many uh, quartz crystals, right? Okay, so this is the deck, the Bataan Tarot by A. Miyako M. And it's in a beautiful, sturdy uh, kind of drawer pull-out box. It's navy blue. Flower, floral imprinting. Now this ribbon right here is used to pull the... Um, box out and I know it's unattached so you can glue it if you want I think she left that up to you know the purchasers discretion so I'm gonna put some little glue dots or something um, to stick this on here so that I can keep it permanently so it'll easily pull out so yeah um, uh, maybe use some of that Tombow adhesive strip or something. So that's very nice, nice gold ribbon. There is a little white book 
there are there is a thumb cut out here so and it's chunky but we'll take a look at that later um, because I did buy the extra uh, the zine guidebook the anthology that goes with with this deck um, because this is kind of a story deck now and see it's just plain plain box on the inside but it's nice and sturdy uh, this deck now it's not wrapped in plastic it has a sleeve a plastic sleeve on it you got you get your choice and you can still get your choice of edging now I went for just I really wanted the navy blue matte edging but there are some uh, issues if you decide to get that and I saw this on Casper's video and I also saw it on Fable's Den Den's video um they both got the matte blue edging navy edging which looks really wonderful but there is this is linen cardstock nice textured linen and there's ever so slightly some bleeding through with the edging to to the edge of the cards to, uh, mostly I saw it to the fronts so if that doesn't bother you the um, the ed it's beautiful but I knowing how persnickety I am I I think it would bother me so and also I saw in Fables Den her she had on one or two of her cards it looked like some of the edging, the the ink or whatever it was, got onto some of her cards and you know stained it. So I didn't want to deal with that. So I opted for the gold. Now let's take start taking a look at these cards. And excuse me if I bump the camera, my phone. <laughs> But we are going to get in as close as we can get just so you can see these beautiful cards. I want you to have the best view possible. I will tr try not to make this video go by so slow, but I also want you to get a good look so you can make, you know, see if this is in your wheelhouse or not. But this is a beautiful textured linen. It feels a lot like um, the Tarot of the Divine I did a recent unboxing of, that mass market deck. So the cardstock feels very, very similar. But look at how gorgeous this is. This is um, a black and indigo navy background. These florals are beautiful. I'm not quite sure what the insignias are. <clears throat> if they have any meaning, if you know, let me know in the comments. But these are beautiful and it, the, the cardstock should be able to shuffle very easily. Overhand, riffle shuffle. And we have the Fool. Now I will tell you that this is, um, I think when, when we get into the suits, this is kind of a story deck. And that's why I got the extra guidebook. Because I think the little chunky book um, just goes into the basic meaning maybe of the tarot cards. But uh, Casper, the, the boy diviner, said if you really want to get the most out of this deck, that the extra guidebook, which is $15, the zine, <clears throat> is... Uh, what you need. So let's go to it. The Fool. Now right now I'm already getting vibes of the Sacerbito Tarot in some ways. It's it, it's totally different but kind of the same feel in some ways. And I'm wondering if I'm going to get similar types of readings but I just fell in love with this artwork. Here's the High Priestess. Gorgeous, and you get some of the symbology in her tattoos. The Empress. Now, from what I remember from the walkthroughs and the deck that the, the, um, the Majors are, it's very close up, like portrait. 
So the Empress, you're not going to get like traditional RWS, like all of the symbology. It's kind of its own depiction. Um, like you're not going to have the shield and the pomegranate and the dress and, and, and whatnot. But this reminds me a lot of the Sacerbito Tarot and also another deck that, you know, does full on close ups is the, um, like the old Morgan Greer. <clears throat> the High Priest. So I don't know, you get kind of this bull energy. So the High Priest instead of the Hierophant, which I, I like. Uh, the Lovers. Beautiful, beautiful. The Chariot. I like that it's different colored dogs. And they seem to be moving. There, I feel some motion in that. Beautiful strength card. Now I'm wondering if this insignia is belongs is a stamp maybe for the artist. But this is a beautiful and traditional strength card. The Hermit. Now I'll have to read the guidebook, but I like how the number for the card is stamped on her jacket or her clothing. But other than being a solitary figure, I'm not, you know, you don't get the traditional symbology for the Hermit. Like if it didn't have this and this, you could say this is an oracle card with a pretty girl on it. I do like this Wheel of Fortune. Now, without this, you could say, yeah, that's the Wheel of Fortune card. I hope that my phone is picking up, though, the gorgeousness of this artwork and, and just having it on the linen cardstock adds that much more to it. Justice, a little bit of a different, maybe Asian depiction of justice. I don't know. Um, there's no scales, but I like it. The Hanged Man. Again, uh, <clears throat> I like the motion that's depicted. Reminds me of the Lightseer's Tarot depiction of the Hanged Man. Um, yes, they're in sort of a, a, a point of limbo, but not totally stagnant and they can get out of their uh, stagnation and position whenever they want to. Death. Beautiful death card. I have to see what flower is depicted here because maybe it has a correspondence to death. Temperance. So yes, you do get temperance. You know, even if it wasn't labeled, you could say, yeah, that has temperance energy in it. Beautiful, beautiful, the devil. And he's got these very light horns. Um, I like this, you know, he's a beautiful depiction. Um, it, a beautiful humanoid form, but you don't know what lies underneath. 
and maybe only some eyes can see. And he's smoking too, so that's a throw to maybe some vices. The tower. Now, I love this depiction of the tower. Now, I believe from Casper's video, because he his, his walkthrough, he had already gone through and read through the book, and I have not. But from what he said, I believe this is a depiction of you know, the cabins, the huts in a Japanese internment camp in the 1940s. I believe that's what he said, but I have not read the guidebook or the zine, so I'm not certain. But if that's the case, it's, it's a powerful image. A beautiful, serene image, but it packs a punch. The star... And if, I think these are zodiac astrological correspondences. I don't know if you can pick that up on my camera on her um, top. And then there's stars all over her. It's beautiful. This artwork is just beautiful. The moon. And it looks like her headpiece has maybe phases of the moon on it. Very celestial. The sun. Judgment. Well, I know in um, Judeo-Christian religion, this would be you know, the angel Gabriel about to blow the horn, but I'd be interested to see if it's a different interpretation. Um, I haven't delved that much into Buddhism, or, or I, I really am mostly ignorant of Asian culture, so I'm telling you that right now. So if I make a mistake or say something that sounds stupid, I'm just telling you. Um, I don't mean to offend. I, I'm just, you know, not that well versed. There's so many things that I'm, uh, that I need to learn and that I, I have a checklist and I don't know if I'm going to get to learn it all by the time my time on earth <laughs> is done. The world. I do get kind of that, that, um, energy of completion, but if it didn't have the world card on it, you know, it'd be a pretty girl on the card. But I love this artwork so much that I can work with it. The Ace of Swords. This is spectacular. Now, I think the miners, for my recollection, are a little bit more pip-like or illustrated pips. And I think each one has a story. The suits all have kind of a story. This crane uh, sewing scissors that you can buy. The Three of Swords. I love this depiction. The Four of Swords. So it looks like birds. Um, are the main character in this suit. The Five of Swords. I just had to take a swig of my Coke Zero there. Six of Swords. Seven of Swords. Eight of Swords. Now you can get some tradi some traditional RWS meaning from so far from what I've seen. Beautiful, beautiful colors. Nine of Swords. And 
the Ten of Swords. I'm really excited to read the uh, anthology that goes with this. And just, just look at this. The backs of the cards, they're so beautiful. You know, there is the border, as you can see, but it's very, very unobtrusive. And I think it, it adds. It doesn't detract. Page of Swords. The Knight of Swords. Queen of Swords. And the King of Swords. Now we are into the Ace of Wands. Suit of Wands. It's like um, possibly bamboo. Two of Wands. It looks like there's going to be different creatures in um, this suit. Be different dogs. This is maybe a wolf. Three of Wands. Oh, this is sweet. The Four of Wands. The Five of Wands. And do you see in the background? Is that a dragon? A lion? Can't tell. The Six of Wands. The Seven of Wands. Look at this performing animal on the tightrope. Yes, I am very, very excited to read the book. Eight of Wands, you do get the motion here, blowing in the wind, and then the comet or shooting star. Definitely something's being set in motion in this card. The Nine of Wands. The Ten of Wands. The Page of Wands. He is also uh, carrying the bamboo or the load, the same load. So I don't know the story. Maybe this wolf transforms into a human. I, I don't know and I'm very excited to find out. The Knight of Wands. Oh my gosh. Now this is the same. It's like a, a dragon, I think, that was, you know, superimposed. That was in the background of the other card. And he's got it on his shield. The Queen of Wands. Oh my gosh. So beautiful. So, so beautiful. The King of Wands. And now we are into the coins. Look how beautiful that is. Oh my gosh. Watercolor, I believe it looks like. The Two of Coins. And it looks like we could be getting into another story. The Three of Coins, kind of working together for a common goal. 
You get that from the card. The Four of Coins. Five of Coins. <laughs> oh, Six of Coins. The Seven of Coins. The Eight of Coins. You see the texture? I mean, just much like the Tarot of the Divine. And I have a full unboxing of that. But yeah, the cardstock is very, very similar. Nine of Coins. And the Ten of Coins. Isn't that sweet? Looks like the faces of the moon right here. The Page of Coins. Beautiful. And look, she's got antlers coming out of her head. So I know this this has to have some significance. And there's that mask again. The Knight of Coins. The Queen of Coins. And see, she's got the bunny ears. And there's bunnies right here. The King of Coins has the horse that was in the five, five of coins. Now the Ace of Cups. Guys, look at this. Look how beautiful and serene. So I'm getting calm energy from this, from handling this deck, from looking at the pictures. It'll be interesting to see when you read with it. Um, oh, there's sort of a dragon figure here, the Two of Cups. So another story here. Um, if it will give, you know, in your face readings, you know, when you need it. I have a feeling it will. And especially once I read the stories and add that extra dimension, I think it'll be a well-rounded deck. Five of Cups. Oh, it's out of order. So this was the Three of Cups. <laughs> Here, it should be like this. This is the Four. And then there should be the five. And we're at the six of cups. So I would say definitely the um, cups is a very pip-like suit with some minor illustration. Seven of cups. I know the snake is going to have some significance as this dragon here in the eight of cups. Such a pretty deck, you guys. Nine of Cups. I think this story has to do with peaches, if I remember correctly. In one of the other unboxings, they mentioned that it had to do something with peaches. Ten of Cups. There's that fish and water dragon creature again together. Page of Cups. The wardrobe in this deck is really spectacular. <laughs> Knight of Cups. The 
Queen of Cups. And the King, the King of Cups. Beautiful, you guys. Just stunning. I'm going to pull out a little bit, so forgive me if I bump. Just because we are going to take a look at Shuffles Fine. It's, you know, got that new feel to it. Um, I would say it's a little bit stiffer to shuffle than my Tarot of the Divine uh, with the similar cardstock, but that's because this has the gilding. You know what it feels like? It feels like, oh gosh, what's that animal deck? Anima Mundi, the Anima Mundi Tarot. That's exactly what this feels like. The, the matte cardstock with the gold edging, which that deck has as well. If you need a reference, um, cardstock feels like the Anima Mundi with the gilding, but also with just the cardstock itself. It's like the, the mass market tarot of the divine. So yes, it feels beautiful. I think I can get my hands around this deck. Ah, barely for it. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of a ripple shuffle and it is fine if you want to do that and it once you know you work with it a little bit it's no problem it's it's a dream to hold in your hand so fantastic so we're gonna take a quick look at what's included with the book that you get it's a simple guide so it just goes straight into the card meaning. So you do get a picture, a colored picture of the card, which is fantastic, but it's very minimalistic. You're just gonna get the name of the card, upright keywords, reversed keywords. So that is all you're gonna get. So nothing about the stories that I know that the suits There's no table of contents. Um, <clears throat> and there's no spreads and no history about, you know, no introduction. So that is why I think the Boy Diviner um, recommended getting the zine. So the little white, white book, it's great that you get a full colored picture of the, um, sorry for all that noise, of the card, but it is very, very bare bones. Okay, so let's move those out. So this anthology, the Botantero, So she does have an introduction and she talks about um, the deck. In 2020, I launched the completed 78. Okay, this started out, one thing, this started out as a major arcana deck only, but she says in 2020, I launched the completed 78 tarot deck with illustrations to pay tribute to my Japanese American heritage. Art Nouveau and the traditional folk stories I grew up with. The completed deck is named the Botan Tarot. Botan in Japanese is written and she has a symbol. It means peony, which is the flower predominantly featured on the back design of the tarot deck as well as on several cards. In Japanese flower language, peonies represent bravery. Botan is also a play on the word botanical as I use Japanese flower language and other plant imagery throughout the deck. Um... So you get a larger 
you get larger pictures here. You get um, keywords, but you also get a little bit about the car, their, uh, her interpretation. So like um, down here, I'm looking at the High Priestess, and she says she is also known as Persephone, Isis, and Artemis, so I've incorporated various symbols from each of those, the moon, arrow, co cobra, pomegranate, narcissus flowers. And she does, for some of these cards, she, she takes a picture against a beautiful background for the emperor and empress. Do you see that? So the card against a beautiful background. Um, and some of these get more, some of them get a bigger picture, some of them you get the original sketch drawing. This is fantastic. Look at all this you get for death. So, yeah, you get a lot more for some cards than the other. Let's go into this. Yeah. A little less for some of them, even though they're majors. So, it's not all equal. All cards are not created equal. So, then she goes into the um, minors and the history with the minors. So, um, she's in 2019, she stumbled upon a book that my grandmother used to read to me titled Japanese Children's Favorite Stories from 1958. So I think that's where she got um, the inspiration for some of these stories. She goes into the theme and symbols of the Minor Arcana. Okay, so the suit of swords is the Chrysanthemum Kingdom. And she goes with the, um, she starts with the court cards first. And then she goes into the suits. And the wands is the bamboo kingdom. The orchid kingdom for the swords, or I'm sorry, the, the coins. P the plum blossom kingdom for the suit of cups. There's a special thank you, and there's a picture, I think, of the artist with maybe her grandmother. Um, it doesn't look like there's any spreads to speak of. I would have liked to have seen some spreads for this very special deck, but um, the book is beautiful. Minimalistic on the outside, I think I might even color some of these flowers or color some of the leaves but um yes I would agree with Casper that it would be worth it if you decide you like the deck if you truly want to get the deck and work with it to its full potential I think the zine um is kind of essential if it's an extra $15 now this is not an inexpensive it's, it's pricey on the uh indie scale um i think it was about 70 dollars just for the deck yeah and it was nine dollars shipping here in the u.s so and then adding the um extra uh this extra 15 so it is an investment so i hope that i went through the cards slow enough because this is a major investment but it is a spectacular, just lovely, lovely deck. Beautiful production. Um, 
it, it does have shades of the Saucer Rubido Tarot. Reminds me, it has that same feel, but in a softer color palette. So I may do a, a video of the side-by-side -side of this deck. So maybe to determine if you have the Saucer Rubido, do you need this deck? Or would one fill the, you know, with Saucer Rubido, if you already have it, fill the itch for this? So yeah, maybe keep on the lookout for that video in the future. Um, I am glad that I purchased this deck. I am very happy. So let me know in the comments below, what do you think? Do you have this deck? Have you been working with it? Do you have the Saucer Rubido as well? I don't know. They're, they're totally different and it's not, it's not right. I guess it's not really good or kosher to compare the decks by two different artists, but at the same time, um, they are Asian American artists and I, they had, I've worked with the Saucer Rubido a lot and, and just holding this in, in my hand, it has a similar feeling. I think, I think maybe this might be more gentle because of the softer color palette, but you know, that's not always an indicator. So let me know what you think. It, do you think, um, this is something you might think of getting in the future. What do you think about the artwork? And I am a very small channel and I would, if you found any value to this, please hit a like, a subscribe, a notification, a share if you know maybe if this deck is on somebody's um, a wish list and it would really help me out. And I appreciate you guys and for those of you who have subscribed and supported me, Thank you, thank you, and until next time, I'll be back very soon with another video. Have the best of days, y'all.